Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this service. It's so good to see you all here. Um, it's lovely, a beautiful morning. Unfortunately, a tree's come down and you might have had difficulty getting here, but it's good to see that you've made it. How lovely. Unfortunately, poor Keith is having problems. We hope to have the pictures um, and uh, fingers crossed and a big prayer. Maybe we're going to be all right. Let's just have a word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that we are able to be here today, gathered together to worship you. It's lovely to have Dr. Sue Wilson with us this morning, and thank you for coming along. A very warm welcome to you, and I hand over to you now. Thank you. Well, I've been coming to the Tortival Methodist for a long time. Some of you may remember. I, I know that one time I came, unfortunately, I know it was Mothering Sunday, and the clocks went whatever way they go, and I was having my breakfast, when I, it was made by the family, it was, and, the, and the, the, the mushrooms looked gorgeous, and I was in my nighty, and, um, and a phone went and said, are you coming to the service, because the clocks had moved, and I was still having my breakfast, or just beginning my breakfast, and I was meant to be at the Tortable Methodist Church, so I'm sure I've got something to do with the fact that the overhead isn't working as well, but never mind. Um, I bring you greetings from my own, my own home church, which is Holy Trinity. It's probably glad to get rid of me this morning. And, and also from the Christians in Kagira, the place I'm going to tell you about. We've got a couple of visitors from America there at the minute, and they are so grateful to all the prayers that come up from you here and, um, and the support that you give us. So thanks very much. Um, I think let's, let's go forward and, um, or, well, yes, let, let me just say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If we go to hymn number one, which is the first hymn, um, is number 86. Praise the Lord, you heavens adore him. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Before the prayers, um, I'll lead us in a time of confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just 
and will forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now Christine will come and lead us in intercessions. Let us pray. As we gather here before you, Lord God, we prepare ourselves to receive your word. Heavenly Father, we pray for people known to us who are unwell and ask for your comfort to surround them and give them your peace. We pray for any anxious, hurting, lost, lonely and bereaved especially Anne and family, as they mourn the loss of Len. We ask that through your grace you will uphold them in their time of need. We pray for countries affected by fires, floods and unusual weather conditions that have turned their lives upside down. Give them courage to rebuild their homes in an effort to get back to some form of normality. We bring before you the work being done by Tumaini, that it may continue to support widows, children and orphans to have opportunities for a better life. We pray for the people in Tanzania working to improve education and give life-changing opportunities to less privileged. We thank you for the work and dedication of Dr. Sue and her team who continue to work to alleviate the suffering and raise awareness of the challenging problems of poverty and provide food and education for children and young people. We ask these prayers in your name, O Lord, our Saviour. Amen. Now the first reading will be brought to us by Bob. Um, the passage is 1 Kings 17, 7 to 16. Some time later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gates, a widow was there, gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar? so I may have a drink. As she was going to get it, he called, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home to make a meal for myself and my son so that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small cake of bread for me from what you have, and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour 
will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry, run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Our second hymn is hymn 476, One More Step Around the World I Go. second reading. <clears throat> Matthew 14 verses 13 to 21. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowd followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowd away so that they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them somebody to eat, something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fishes, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the, la the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to, 
to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, beside women and children. Before we sing our next hymn, let's join together in the prayer that Jesus gave us. We'll do the old-fashioned one that has trespasses, if you're okay with that. And, um, and if we get the words wrong, it doesn't really matter, because he knows what we're saying anyway. So let's, let's join together in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so now we have our next hymn, which is... <laughs> um, now, Father, we love you, um, number six. Is it number six? Yes. yes. Oh, that one there, number six. Do I take it? It's not working. Is it? Okay. If you can make it work, that would be lovely. It'd be good for everyone to have a quick prayer. Otherwise, you're going to get you're going to get a, a long sermon without pictures. Let's back up. So. If this doesn't work, I'll yeah. just, I'll just, I'll just carry it's on. Just Don't worry. Really no. Okay, then it's the long sermon, everyone. Could, can we just try, I try with your computer? No, yeah. we won't. Okay. We're, the time's going on. Okay, so right. thank you ever so much, right. Keith. Don't no, thank you very much indeed. So I've given you all hopefully a, um, a calendar, so you'll be able to see. Um, some bits and pieces about Tumaini. 
Um, actually, the calendar's a bit of a failure in a way because I've got lovely um, Martin Henry, I don't know, he's John Henry's, J.R. Henry's son, and he's a graphic designer and he puts together the calendar when we do it. And it is lovely, but he won't let me put pictures of suffering on it. He says people won't want to open their calendar every month to suffering. So we've got a calendar full of smiling faces and what happens when Tumaini comes, when hope comes, and, um, and, and good things happen. The only picture that's really of any, any relevance, I think, is on the first page in January. Um, if you have a look at the, the little picture in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see Isaac Kabombo, his mother and sister, um, in 2004. So for those of you who don't know about Tumaini, Tumaini means hope, and it's something that the folk in Kagira really need. Kagira is in the far northwest of Tanzania. Tanzania is one of the 10 poorest countries in the world. The wealth is centered on Dar es Salaam, which is on the Indian Ocean in the southeast. And Kagira is, a, is the region that's furthest away from Dar. So, when, you're, when you think the money's in Dar and go out with a compass further and further and further, the further and further you go, the poorer you are. And Kagira was, was um, declared the poorest region in, in Tanzania last year. It's the furthest you can get. So if it's one of the 10 poorest countries in the world, the region I'm taking you to is the poorest region in one of the poorest countries of the world and we're working with the AIDS widows and orphans, the AIDS community. So the AIDS community is the poorest part of a community in one of the poorest regions, in one of the poorest um, countries in the world. So they're really poor. Um, and when we see them, when I go and, and visit the families that we haven't worked with yet, I'll go to a house that isn't a house. It's made maybe of plastic bags and a bit of straw and maybe a few stones and it won't keep out the rain during the rainy season the children are in rags and that's the only clothes they have they don't have any other clothes in fact Isaac and his family are reasonably well well they're well dressed there but our children are often in brown rags with holes in them um, and they don't really have any hope so what Tumaini is doing is bringing hope to these people um, I went, my, my husband and I are both GPs in Guernsey, and um, we went out to work in this area in 2001. It was a time when HIV had gone up from 2.8% in this area, which is the size of Northern Ireland, to 28%, which meant that one in three of the women we delivered had AIDS, and there was no AIDS treatment, so that woman was dying. The baby had a one in three chance of having AIDS and the baby was going to be orphaned too soon, together with all the woman's other children. The husband was usually either dead by this time or on his way out. It was terrible. The reason they had so much AIDS was that they're next to Rwanda and Burundi, and so following the Interhamway, the civil wars in Rwanda and Burundi, the men of war that lost were driven over the border and they attacked the women and the girls down to girls of 12 years old and gave them AIDS. So that's why the HIV went up from 2.8 to 28%. And that's what my husband and I saw when we were there. I went to valleys where I only saw children looking after children, children with a baby like your baby on their back, wandering about looking for food. They had no mums and dads left, whole clans. It was like Peter Pan and Neverland and the Lost Boys. There were no grown ups left. There might be one or two grannies and grandpas the age of some of us, but there was no one else left. So it was a terrible thing. So I came back and tried to find a charity like, I don't know, Christian Aid, World Vision, Save the Children, anyone who would take on this area. And after nine months of being back, it was clear that they all had very good plans in place, but they weren't going out to Kagira soon. So I prayed and I said, Father, because I was feeling really guilty, Father, someone, is going to have to help these children. And um, so nothing happened. There was no writing on the wall and no great voice from heaven. But over the next few days and weeks, I thought, you know, Dougie and you 
have got a decent disposable income, you could support a few children. Maybe some of the Christians in Guernsey might support a few children. Maybe some folk at clinic might support one or two. So I thought this was 2003 when we started Tumaini, which is 20 years old this year. I thought we could maybe support 50 children. So um, 2023, we're now supporting 100,000 children. <coughs> wasn't my plan, definitely wasn't my plan. So I'm trusting in the one whose plan I take it must have been to keep providing. And that's where, um, you know, where, where the passages from today's readings come into the work of Tumaini. Um, I have to, I'm trusting him 100% and he is always faithful. And I'm bringing that hope, that Tumaini, to you today as we look at those um, passages together. If you have a look at that picture again, as I say, Isaac and his mum and sister aren't badly dressed, to be honest, but their house was absolutely falling down. Their father was dead, and they really didn't have much hope. And that was probably the first house that Tumaini rebuilt. We've built hundreds of houses since then, and hundreds of wells bringing the children clean water. Anyway, Isaac carried on with his education. He was a rather sulky-looking um, teenage boy there. I had four boys. I know that look really well. And, um, but there he was, quite sulky. The next year I came back, and he was doing some things, modifications to the wall of the house. The next thing I heard from him was when he graduated from university. We have 250 children in university this year. Um, and here he is with his psychology degree. And then back we go to the big main picture. There's Isaac, probably a couple of years ago. Isaac is now our director of programs in Tumaini. So we're looking after 100,000 orphans and five out of six of our leaders since we've been educating the orphans since 2003. Many of them now have degrees. Five out of six of our leaders have degrees. <laughs> and are leading it, and, and Isaac is the, the head leader of Tumaini at this time. So let's have a look at the, the Bible passages together. 100,000 orphans, how on earth do we manage to support them? Well, we manage to support them with as much money as people give us. We manage to support them with as much prayer as is given for the work, because we don't turn anyone away. And we can't always do everything we want to do. I always say, if I could get a million pounds a year, that would give me 10 pounds for each child. And I think we could carry out the work well. We've got people helping us in England, Scotland, Canada, America now, Alderney and Sark. So we've got people all over. And usually every year we have about 600,000 pounds going out. So never, never quite enough. However, we just keep going. And if you remember, Elijah was sent to this widow at Zarephath, the widow, all my works with widows, and all my works with widows who are with their children who have nothing to eat tonight. They send out the oldest child around their neighbours to say, have you got anything spare? We haven't got anything to eat tonight. And they usually get something. And our parish workers, we have 400 parish workers in pairs who look after two to four villages and they make sure that everyone's all right but here was a widow he asked her for water and she willingly went to get him some water but then Elijah asked her for food and she said well I haven't got anything all I've got is this little bit of flour and some oil in a jar I'm going to go and make some uh, some bread for me and my son and then we're going to die and that's how people in Kagira are today and that's how I know, you know one of the joys of coming to Tortable Methodist through the years was many of your um, lovely congregation now have been promoted to glory but many of them remembered the occupation and not having any food and starving and when I showed them pictures they'd always nod and I knew that they knew what I was talking about Anyway, this lady did what God said, and that's what, you know, what we have to do. 
Elijah told her through God to go and do what she had to do, make him some bread, and she did it. And Elijah told her what God had said, that it wasn't going to run out until the job was done. And that's what happened, for the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Then we go to another time when God provided quite amazingly, that time to a widow, this time to 5,000 people. Well, no, 5,000 men. We don't know how many women and children there are, but there were a lot more than 5,000 there. And, and when did this happen? It happened just after John the Baptist's head was chopped off. Jesus' much-loved cousin who really got him, who understood, understood who he was and what he was about, his flesh and blood, and John had just been beheaded. So Jesus took himself off somewhere just to, to grieve and to pray and so on, and he went to a solitary place. But when he got there, he found there was a crowd of people who knew that he was going there, and he had compassion on them. So the thought is, you know, it's not always convenient, and the overhead doesn't always work, but we're called upon always to follow Jesus, to listen to what he said. He will provide what's needed, and he found that from his father. He got from his father what he needed when his heart was breaking to speak to all these people, and he had com compassion on them and healed their sick, and it got to be evening, and everyone got hungry. And as I'm, as I'm telling you, hunger is something that we're so familiar with in Kagira. And the disciples were being reasonable. And they said, right, right, well, they haven't got anything to eat. So let's send them away now so they can get some food and they'll be okay. And Jesus said, no, you feed them. And I'm afraid that's what Jesus said to me. I was trying to find someone to help these children, but it seemed that Jesus said, you and everyone else who's helping with Timaini, you do it. And do you know, when we obey that and when we listen to him, he provides Jehovah Jireh, always the same, from the very beginning to when he comes to take us all home, always the same, Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. So, so they brought five loaves and two fishes, a little boys picnic presumably and Jesus blessed that what they gave him so if we give 600,000 it may not be a million and someone may give me a pound but God blesses that and somehow it achieves so much more than you can imagine so Jesus gave thanks he gave thanks for 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 this small amount he blessed it and my goodness not only did God um feed everyone there but there were 12 baskets left at the end of fish and bread and this happened and to many in this day we're seeing the same God because he is the same yesterday today and forever I know you've got needs in your life and I know there are people in your life that you long for them to know Jesus and to come to him and know you may have health issues or financial issues. But do you know, the, we say in Tanzania, Yesu Anatosha, Jesus is enough. And he will meet us at our point of need as he met that widow in Zarephath by his spirit through the prophet Elijah. And as he met the 5,000 and he fed them and he will do that, we can have trust and we can have hope. Let's pray together. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we lift up the people that have come to our minds now and we ask you to bless them. And we ask you to provide for them and for us in our need. And we thank you that you are faithful and we worship you in Jesus' dear name. Amen. Now, now we're going to have our fourth hymn. Um, during which we'll take our collection. And the hymn is 57, Let All the World in Every Corner Sing. <clears throat>
Heavenly Father, we offer our gifts to you for the work in to, for Tumaini in Tanzania. Be with the people there. Let them know the love comes from our church here and from many areas to keep them going. Amen. Amen. If I say thanks and then you want to say thanks. So please be seated. Um, I'd love to thank you all so much for having me here today. It's been lovely to be back at Tortable Methodist. Because I haven't been able to show my pictures, therefore there's an opportunity to come one evening or for a coffee morning when I can bring baskets and, and things that the widows have made and I can show you some pictures. So I'll leave that with you. Maybe that's a thought, isn't it? <laughs> And maybe we'll uh, try and get it all sorted before then. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be lovely. I can, I can bring other things to show, show it, so you can do that. Thank you, Keith, for yes. having tried. We Thank know you so he's much. been here twice this week, and it must be very disappointing for him. I know he spent a lot of time, so sorry about that. Thank you. Oh no, thank you very much. Let me close then with the words of the blessing that the Lord gave Aaron many, many years ago. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us and give us peace. In these last few moments of the service, let us turn around and greet one another with the peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.